Um, I'm going to start back over for those that may not have heard me joining the meeting, um, but thank you for joining. Welcome to the um, fourth quarter information security um, webinar for Venza uh, 2017. We're going to give you a nice big Christmas present and walk you through how to use our Venza Peak portal. And those of you with custom LMSs, we're going to also show you some of the same features that you use in your own and some updated features for this year. Um, I am actually going to be running the chat box for this group, so a little bit of housekeeping. I'd like to ask everyone to mute their mics so that there's no interruptions as we go through, and I will man personally the chat box, which is going to be in the lower left-hand corner of this Skype call. So if you have any questions, feel free to throw them in the chat box. I will let you know that after this call, we'll be sending anyone who signed up for the, the webinar a recording of the webinar so you'll see the visual and hear the dialogue that goes along with it and you'll be able to request any documents that were used on this call and so again um, what I would like to personally do is thank the Venza customer success team for being present and especially our customer success team lead Kayla Saldivar she's going to be leading this call walking you through um, our Venza uh, portal resources and features and functions Guys, happy holidays, and I hope this can answer some questions you have about training your teams. And again, I'm going to man the chat box for you. And Kayla, I'd like to ask you to step in and take over. Awesome. Thanks, April. Thank you for that introduction. Um, season's greetings to everyone on the call. Um, welcome, like April said, to Vince's fourth and final webinar for this year. Um, just in case you're not aware, we do host these quarterly webinars to help educate and give you some insight into Finza as well as the InfoSec world. Um, if you have some ideas or topics for our 2018 webinars, please feel free to suggest it in the survey that you will receive after the demonstration, okay? Um, like April mentioned already, just in case there's some that joined after she said it, um, it'd be great uh, for those that just recently joined, if you could mute your calls uh, to the end of the demo. Um, in the event that you have a question, she will be manning those uh, that chat box for any questions that you have. So please feel free to post them there. Um, and then we'll open up the lines for the last 15 minutes of the webinar for any additional questions that you may have. Okay, so with that said, let's begin. All right, so this demonstration, um, there will be no property management specific information here or brand specific information. It is just that it's going to be a demonstration. Um, and if you have your own personalized LMS, you may see some slight variations there as well. Um, so just to get that out the way, if you see some things that are different, it's probably because you're special. So we're going to go ahead and get started. What we're going to look at first um, are what we call the quick reference guide documents. And these are usually the documents that you receive uh, right after the demonstration. And of course, today, uh, once you get that email, if you want to respond to it and request your property specific, your property management or brand specific uh, quick reference guide documents, we'll be happy to get that out to you. Um, and so there are, I believe, five documents. We're going to come back to these at the end, and the reason why we start in the beginning with this is so you know exactly what you're going to get. So you don't necessarily have to worry about writing anything down, because we've got you covered with these documents. Uh, so the very first one um, is information security. Um, what is PCI and what is PII? This was created so that your staff can become more familiar and more aware um, of exactly what those terms are. And it's something that you can just print and hang in a highly visible area. It doubles as a great um, e-poster. So uh, with that said, we're going to move on. The next one is going to be accessing your compliance training. And so this is how you're going to launch the program or kick it off to your team there at the property. Um, this, like I said, would be filled out. So here it would say vincentpeak.com backslash whatever your the, your URL is, or if you have a personalized LMS, uh, your URL would be completely different. Um, it would have your login credentials and default password here as well, and this is just something that's easy that you can print and hand out to your staff to communicate, here this is what you need to do and how to do it. All right, user manager is going to show you um, how to add users into the platform. 
group training and certification is going to show you how to conduct a group training and then manually certify those attendees. Uh, we also have the group training sign-in sheet. This is something you're going to uh, need after you do that group training. This will be that physical proof that you have that they did indeed take the training, they signed off on it, and you'll need this in the event that there is an audit or a breach. Okay. Reporting, uh, we're going to go over some reporting functions, which one's going to be the best report to run, um, how to manipulate those functions to generate the best report for you, as well as resources. So under that resource tab, we've got some great uh, information for you, such as webinars, situational break room posters, and group training sessions, okay? Last but not least, and again, we'll, we'll go over this document at the very end, we have our support center information. We are here to help you. That's exactly what the customer success team here at Finza specializes in. Um, so you have our information, and this information is not only for you um, as e-learning managers, but it is also for your teams. So if you get boggled down with a task or you have a fire that you're dealing with and someone needs a password change, please send them to us. We're happy to take that on and uh, get them going. All right, so once your team logs in for the very first time into the training portal, they will immediately be brought to a page that looks like this. Okay. This page that you see here is the security settings page. Um, here is where the individual user, the end user, is going to log in and set up their security Questions and answers, um, they're going to be unique to that individual. Two most common questions that we get on this page, um, which is why we recommend that if you have some um, people on your team that aren't that technologically savvy, that you pair them with someone so that um, they can kind of pass this page with ease. It can be quite painful if they're not, if they're not that tech savvy. Um, so two most common questions, what is my PIN? I don't have a PIN. And so we usually tell them or explain that this is a four-digit number that you're going to create. It's whatever you want it to be. Um, new password, of course, they're going to create their new password here. Uh, most common question, what is my old password? I don't have an old password, Kayla. This is the first time I'm logging in. Your old password is your default password. And remember that default password can be found on accessing your compliance training. So it'll be right here, okay? So that is the most common question. What is my old password? They'll click Submit. Once they click Submit, <clears throat> they may see something like this. And so for some, some of you on the line, this may be something that's new that you've never seen before. Um, but I guarantee you, you'll probably see it in 2018 if you haven't seen it in 2017. Um, this is just a simple notification that we put in the system. So as your, your partner in information security, it is our responsibility to make sure and inform you of the latest acts of criminal behavior. So this one right here just speaks to ransomware attacks are on the rise. So be aware, be on the lookout for it. If you're not familiar with what ransomware is, please review the InfoSec email hygiene course, okay? So some people get a little nervous when they see this pop up, um, but all you have to do is read it and then click OK. All right, so once you click OK, you then at that point will immediately be brought into the uh, the dashboard, the user dashboard. Here again, remember there will be some variations depending on what your um, enterprise looks like. Okay, now at the very top, would like to mention that you are able to toggle this into Espanol. So um, you can change it from English to Spanish. And this is just for actually the user dashboard. And so that changes it for the end user there. Okay. All right, so this is what your end user sees as soon as they log in. Um, again, we are in the demo site here, so there will be some slight variations. Your user logs in for the first time. They create those security settings. And so all they need to do now at this point is go to My Courses. Under My Courses, they'll see a list of the courses that are assigned specifically to them. 
and it's going to take a couple seconds before we get there, but here we are. Um, they will see a list of courses that have been assigned specifically to them. I do get quite a lot of people that are like, we have to take all of those courses. And so I have to remind them that uh, the courses up top listed as core are the courses that are required. Um, the electives are not required unless deemed by your, your brand or your property management group. Okay, and so to take the course, the progression bar will look like what you see here. It'll be blank. You'll click take and the course will play in its entirety. But let's say your staff gets caught up with the guest, the guest needs assistance, and they need to stop their training. It will look like what you see here, that yellow progression bar. And then as soon as they come in and they click retake, it will pick up where they left off. So it'll pick right up. Once they complete it, the progression bar will then turn green. Um, and they will be complete for that course. Okay. Besides that, I do want to make mention of a couple of other things while we're on this page. Once they are complete with the courses that are required for training, the certificate will be here for them to print up top. Okay. Um, other than that, languages that are offered um, where the users are offered in English, Spanish, German, and French. And now Chinese, we have Chinese, so that's awesome um, as well. French will be updated, just so you're aware. It will be updated in quarter one of 2018, so that should be exciting as well. All right, so we're gonna move on, but taking the courses are just that simple. The other function that users have the ability to use is here called Profile. Here is the basic user registration page. The user has the ability to update their name or update their email as well. Now let's say they forgot their security questions and answers and they need to reset them or update them. They can do that here under Security Settings. Once they've done that, they click on Save and those changes will be saved there. Right? But it is just that simple for the end user, either using My Courses or Profile. Now, if you are an e-learning manager, meaning that it is your responsibility to train your team at your property, you should have this function up top. It should say Manage. Now, this isn't available to the end user. Um, they will not see this, but you should, and that is pretty much your home life, for the most part, that's where you're going to live in the Vinza world on the manager dashboard. So before we get into user manager, we do have a couple of different survey questions that we're going to interject here um, in this demonstration today. So we're going to go ahead and launch our first poll and see what you think. Let's see who'll get that, that uh, question right. All right, give us just a second here. Okay, and you should be able to see that first question. It says, who should be trained in information security within Venza Peak or your custom Venza LMS? First one is all staff, just card handlers, the criminals themselves, or it's decided by your property management company. Some good answers there. All right, we're going to go ahead and close that poll down. Now go ahead and show everyone the results. And so here's what everyone on the call thinks. So 92% said all staff. 4% said just the, car, just the card handlers. No one said the criminals themselves. I thought for sure someone would pick that one. And then last but not least, decided by your property management company or your brand. All right, so let's go back to the LMS with the answer to this question. And we kind of tricked you a little bit. So 
it is actually decided by your property management company. But I like the way you guys think. So technically, yes, everyone should know about information security, data security, how to protect the information for themselves as well as the information of their, of their guests. Um, but it is decided by your property management company um, who gets to take what. Absolutely. Okay. All right. April, can you verify that you can see my screen or did it disappear when that poll disappeared? I no longer see your screen, Kayla. <laughs> All right. Awesome. So here we go. We're back up and running. Perfect. Okay. So now we're going to go into user manager. User manager is just that. Um, it is how to manage your users in the training portal. So here under user manager, you'll see a list of all of the employees that you manage there at the property level. Okay. And so if you look over here up top to the top right, we have a status menu. Uh, this status bar doubles as a nice drop down menu where you could select um, a variety of ways to search for an individual. Um, the one that we recommend is the last name. So for example, we're going to narrow down this list to anyone with the last name of Dunn. And you can see here that I manage two people. I manage a Jill Dunn and a Jim Dunn. Now let's say Jim, com Jim comes to me and he says, Kayla, I forgot my password. I need you to reset my password. As an e-learning manager, I do have the ability to reset that password. We're going to go over here to edit. And here where it says new password, confirm new password, I would enter that default password there. I'd scroll down after that, and then I would click on save to save those changes. Okay, we're going to go back to user manager uh, here. And there are three important functions at the bottom of this page. Um, and to use any of these three functions, you would simply select that desired employee by putting a check mark next to their name and then applying the function below. So we're going to start with delete because it is the most important, uh, but the one that we that you will rarely ever use. So delete is specifically here for any duplications in the system. If you have two Jim Doe's, two Jane Doe's in the system, and it's misconstruing your compliance percentage, what you want to do is delete one so that it does not um, output the wrong information, OK? Inactivate. Inactivate is the button that you will use more than anything. So let's say you have your, your terminated employees, your seasonal. Um, employees, as well as, um, I'm so sorry, your terminated employees, your seasonal, um, anyone on a sabbatical leave, this is where you want to inactivate them in the system. Um, and the reason why you want to inactivate a term employee and not delete them is because if you delete them in the system, there is no way for you or myself to recover that information. Okay, so when in doubt, inactivate. All right, and then of course they're back. They're back from their leave. The seasonal employees are back for the season. You want to activate them in the system. Okay, let's do another poll really quick. All right. Let's see if you guys are paying attention. All right, can I, the humble eLearn manager, add in my new hires or remove termed associates? Let's see what you guys think there.
All right, I'm going to go ahead and end that poll. And 100% of you guys said, of course I can. So that's that's pretty empowering. We're glad you, you know that you can. That's awesome. So let me go ahead and stop sharing that. And we'll get back to the platform. All right. So with that said, we're going to move on to adding users into the training portal. We're going to discuss adding single user and adding multiple users. So to add a single user, it's going to look like that user registration page again. So here you're going to enter uh, the employee's credentials where it says employee ID. And don't forget, you'll have your handy dandy quick reference guide uh, to use it to refer to uh, for that information. So again, I'll show you briefly. Remember, the login will have their unique user ID there. First name, last name, if they do not have an email address, you are more than welcome to use our dummy account, which is update at email.com. It is always here for your reference. Password and repassword is going to be that default password. The two most difficult things on this page is going to be job class and groups. Okay. You'll notice that under job class, we do have a drop down menu. Uh, but it doesn't give us any options, and that is because you must select a group below to see available roles. So under groups, depending on how um, the system is set up for you in the training portal, you may or may not have departments under your property. Everyone could be at the property level. So this is where you would select, prop, uh, select a department if you have it. So let's say this person is being added to food and beverage. And then you'll see that the job class menu has changed. So now we have the ability to select basic, intermediate, or advanced. Remember, basic is going to be mostly for um, your front desk, your food and beverage manager, um, anyone with little um, overall responsibility of the property. Intermediate is going to be for your um, your general managers, your HRDs, anyone with the higher level of fiduciary responsibilities there at the property should receive intermediate. But a good 95% of your uh, staff will be basic. Advanced, you may or may not have at the property level. Advanced is going to be for your high-level IT personnel, okay? But just please make sure that um, most of your people get basic, intermediate, or advanced. When in doubt, give them basic. It covers the basic knowledge um, of what they should know as it regards to the payment card industry as well as personally identifiable information. Okay, and once you've selected that, last but not least, we have role down here. So you'll have the ability to select either user or a manager for this individual that we're adding into the platform. 99% of the people here will be users, um, and then maybe one or two people other than yourselves will be managers. You want to be very selective of who you give that role of manager to. Um, that is because they will have the ability to manually certify your users. So uh, just be aware of that. We're going to touch back up on that when we go into manual certification, but please keep that in mind. Be very selective. And once you're done there, you're going to click on Save. And then that user will be saved in the system. Now, let's say you have a group of employees that you just hired and you need to get them in the system. We do have the Add Multiple Users function. And so here, you would enter the default password. You select your property or department within that property. Um, and then you would add everyone down below. Remember, again, if they do not have an um, email address, you're more than welcome to use our dummy account, update at email.com. It's here for your reference. Um, and then role, remember, most of them will be users. And once you select the property, you'll have the option of selecting either basic, intermediate, or advanced here for the job class. Now let's say you have, um, actually, and if it's more than five employees before I move on, you do have the option to add rows here, and then you would simply click on Save here at the bottom. 
to save those users. Now let's say you have a group of employees that you need to get added into the system. Let's say it's more than just a few. Let's say it's anywhere from 20 to 30 or more. Uh, you do have the option to conduct a CSV bulk upload. And you would do that here by clicking on CSV. We have pre prepared instructions for you um, so that you have them here and you're aware of how to get this uploaded. But to be honest with you, the customer success team here at Venza, we do user uploads every day. We could probably do them in our sleep at this point. Uh, so with that said, please do not hesitate to send us this file. Um, if you have a group of, of, of employees that you need to get uploaded in the system, like I said, if it's 20 or more, please reach out to us. We'd be happy to do this for you, okay? All right. And April, I'm just going to check in with you because I know that um, people are chatting you in that chat box. Any questions or anything you think everyone would benefit from? I just want to check in with you. Absolutely. So we did have a great question come in um, that asked if the portal came in any other language besides English and Spanish. Unfortunately, at this time, the LMS itself is only in English and Spanish. But like Kayla mentioned earlier, the courses themselves do come in multiple languages. Um, something else I did want to note that it has come across just my desk um, via emails in the past is team where she talked about that email address. The benefit for an email address are phishing campaigns. Kayla's going to get to that in just a little while. Um, do note that the system doesn't send out any sort of notification to you and your team due to the amount of people that just don't have email addresses. And so note that um, the, the reason we ask for those are to participate in phishing campaigns. If you're not familiar with what a phishing campaign is, that may not be part of your program, and you can certainly reach out to our team. But Kayla, those are my only two points. Awesome. Sounds like good information. Awesome. Uh, perfect segue into group trainings and certify. So uh, before we get into that, let's do another poll. All right, so certification is going to be the topic for this one. And let's see what you guys think. So the question is, how can I get my team certificates? I can print them from the certify page. My team members can print them from their My Courses page. They are sent to corporate automatically, or Santa brings them on his sleigh. Awesome. We got one for Santa. Go Santa. <laughs> All right. I'm going to close out this poll, and I am going to share the results with you guys. We got 32% uh, of you that said I can print them from the certified page. Um, the next one, uh, my team members can print them from their My Courses page, 61% of you. Uh, said that, so that's the leader in, in that one. Um, and then we have one person that said that Santa brings them on his sleigh. So we're, we're going to touch on that topic. We'll, we'll see if Santa brings them on his sleigh. Um, so we're going to go into group trainings and uh, discuss how to conduct those group trainings. How do we do group trainings? How do we make sure that those users are certified in the system? Um, when we're after we're done conducting that group training, okay? So what you're going to do, you're going to start off, you're going to get everyone within that group training in a room, um, whether it's huddled around a computer screen or if you're utilizing your conference room, you're going to log in as yourself. You're going to come to the manager dashboard, which is where we are right now. Um, and while you're doing this, the best thing to do at this time while everyone's getting settled in is to have them sign your handy-dandy sign-in sheet. Up top, if you're just training for the course, but 99% of you will be training by the learning path, you'll simply put the course name here or a basic learning path here, okay? All right. So while they're signing that and you've logged into the system, you're then going to come to resources here. And under resources, you're going to see group training sessions. 
We do offer these group trainings in two languages in English and Spanish, and we also have the Spanish transcripts for you here. Now, this page may look a little overwhelming, uh, so let me explain it for you, well, to you. Um, this first button that you see here, the Basic Learning Path for Information Security, this covers that basic learning path. Okay, this one is, this one covers the core courses um, that you're required to take, okay? Every, um, all of the other buttons that you see here, they're nice to have. These are your electives, just like you saw under my courses. These are your nice to have. So if you're training your, uh, for example, if you're training your HRDs, uh, it might be relevant for you to also have them watch protecting at, um, medical information. Sorry about that. Um, so you can add these on to the basic learning path if you would like to as well. We have provided the time for you here so that you know exactly how much time you need to schedule for them to take those trainings. So it's only 36 minutes in English or Spanish, and it's here for you. Other than these two trainings, uh, we do have break room posters available for you as well. So they're right here at your fingertips in English and Spanish. There are a variety of them here. Um, and so you have the choice to pick and select which one you want. So for example, if you feel like your food and beverage staff are struggling a bit, they really don't understand why they have to take this training, what does it have to do with me, you can print the food and beverage break room poster so that they can start to understanding, start to understand their role in protecting guest data. Okay. Now you've launched the course, they've watched it in its entirety, They've signed in on the sign-in sheet. And so now what you want to do is you want to go back to your office. You're going to log back in. You're going to come to your manager dashboard. You're going to have your handy-dandy sign-in sheet right next to you, and you're going to come to certify. Okay. Up top, we're going to change module to by learning path. Okay. We're going to select group. Your property should automatically populate here, okay? So um, it would automatically populate. Now, if you trained a specific department, such as your food and beverage or your housekeeping, you could narrow it down here so just your housekeeping staff would populate here into the search. Um, but we're going to keep it at property one, and we'll see all of our employees here. Okay, now once you do that, you can select Learning Path, and you're going to make sure that you select InfoSec Basic, because that's what they watch. They watch the InfoSec Basic Learning Path. We're going to click Display Results here. And now we have a nice little uh, report of everyone within the property that is assigned the InfoSec Basic Learning Path. Okay, we can see that Jim, he wasn't in that training, so we're going to ignore him. Uh, but Jill and Elvis Presley, they were both in that training. And so in order to complete them, we would simply click on Complete here. Okay? Now, this is exactly what I was talking about earlier. This is why you want to be very, very selective who you give that role of manager to, because they will have the ability to come into the system um, if you give them the role of manager, they'll have the ability to log in and manually certify your users, or quite the opposite, you know? I mean, that Elvis guy, he is something else, and I know he took this training, but we're just going to incomplete him for now, okay? They, they can do it. All right, now we have put different... Um, things in place in the system to prevent things like that from happening. So, for example, if you click Save, because you're trying to save your results, you will have this window up here. Okay, and it says Certification Updates. You'll need to enter the date for that specific training, and then you will be required to have some type of comment for the changes that you're making. So, for example, Group Training Session for Housekeeping. Okay, and then you're required to click Save. So to answer your poll questions, you guys are right. The end user does have the ability to print the, cert the certificates um, on their My Courses page once they complete it themselves, or you will have you have the access and the ability to print that individual certificate as well. Okay, so yeah, it's really not on Santa's sleigh, um, and they are not automatically sent to corporate.
Okay, sorry to disappoint that one person. So we're going to click Save, and that's going to save our results. And now we're going to move forward to my favorite, Reports. Reports is my favorite because it's such a helpful tool for you guys to help you stay organized. Um, and so with that said, we're going to launch our final, final survey question. Let's test your knowledge and see what you guys think about reports. Okay, and this question says, Vinza, you say your reports are robust. I think I need a refresher. What is the best report to see who, is, who on my team is complete? Okay. So we have this report, this portal has reports. I hope if you're, if you all are on this call, I hope everyone knows that we have reports. Uh, user registration report, the training percentage report, and then also the course subscription report. Okay. So the best report, best report to see who on my team is complete. All right, so we have no one that selected the report has, I'm sorry, this portal has reports, which is awesome. I can breathe now. Phew. Uh, we do have one person that has selected user registration is the most helpful. Um, we have 86% of you that say uh, the training percentage report, and then two people have said uh, the course subscription report. So the answer to that question is the training percentage report. That is the most helpful report um, that we um, recommend that you use. So that's what you're going to see me demonstrate right here. That's we're going, what we're going to cover right now. All right, so that training percentage report, the reason why it's the most helpful is because it really helps you understand who has taken the report, I'm sorry, who's taken the training, who has not taken the training, who still needs to take the training, okay? So under the reports, and again, you don't have to worry about writing down these um, filters because we're going to provide that for you after the call upon your request. And so the training percentage report is what we're going to do. Group, your property here should automatically populate. We're going to make sure that status is active because we don't want it reporting on those that are inactive in the system. Training certification should be all learning paths. And then we're simply going to click display results. So once we scroll down, we can see here that property one is currently 33.3% compliant. There are three enrollments, and one of those are complete. Um, it even breaks it down by the department. So if you have department heads at your property that you're utilizing to help you get everyone compliant, um, you can hold them accountable per, per department if you have departments there at your property. Um, but I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Kayla, that report is nice, but that doesn't really answer my question. I need to know specifically who still needs to take my training. So here, under training certification, we're going to add show each course or learning path, and we're going to also show details. We're going to click on display results. And so now, if we scroll down, we have a nice detailed training percentage report. We can see here that currently, again, the property is 33.3% compliant, but we can see that Jim is currently com is currently complete for his training. He is under the InfoSec Basic, and he is within the food and beverage uh, department there at the property. But we can also see some of his teammates in that department are incomplete. Okay. Now, I uh, also want to make mention that you do have the ability to export this res this report into either a Word, Excel, or PDF document. The most helpful one that we recommend is an Excel document. That way you have the ability to filter, um, filter through the report um, to make it more helpful. Okay. Now you would select Export Results As, um, select Microsoft Excel here, and then click Display Results then that report will populate here in the lower left-hand corner, okay? We also have auto report settings feature, 
where you'll have the ability to name the report. You can schedule a frequency of how often you would like to receive it in the beginning. We always recommend that um, at the initial launching of this program that you set up the reminders for Sunday that the report is delivered so that it is sitting in your inbox first thing Monday morning. Okay. Now let's say there's someone at the property that's going to be helping you get everyone compliant, but you don't want to give them the role of manager because you don't want them to manually certify your users. You have the ability here to CC them. So they'll get the report, the report during the same frequency as you um, without that responsibility. And you'll simply click Save Report here. It will populate here to the right under Existing Auto Reports, as well as on your Manager Dashboard. It will appear here. So now that you've saved, that, uh, saved the report using that Auto Report setting feature, you no longer have to enter those filters. So now you can come here and simply click Display, and the report will automatically populate. All right. OK, so we are narrowing down to the end. We're going to go ahead and review those documents that you can receive um, upon your request. Um, some things to also look forward to um, coming in 2018. Uh, we all know that GDPR is going to be huge. Um, as of today, we are um, implementing courses into the LMS for the intermediate level. Um, they will be elective, so they won't be required, but they will be they will be available for you to uh, learn about. Um, and so, for those that don't know what GDPR is or stands for, it does stand for General Data Protection Regulation. Okay, um, so brush up on those courses because they should be available before end of today, okay? All right, so again, if you registered for this demo, you will receive a follow-up email from us um, with the demonstration attached. So you'll get a copy of this footage, the video, um, and everything that we went through here today. Um, you'll also, in that email, will contain a survey and the ability to request your property management or brand specific quick reference guide documents, which is what you see here. So again, that first document, because you're going to have so many of your employees coming up to you saying, April, what is PCI? What is PII? Why do I have to take this training? What, what is so, what's so important about this? You can simply print this out for them and hand it over to them and say, here, here's all about information and data security. Read all about it. This is why this training is necessary, okay? Next document, accessing your compliance training. This is how you're going to launch the program and introduce it to your employees and your staff there. Um, it'll have your URL, login information, um, very easy steps on how to become compliant. User manager, how to add users in the system. Group training and certification, so how to conduct that group training and how to manually certify your users, as well as your handy-dandy group training sign-in sheet. Um, another common question we get about this one is, do I have to use your group sign-in sheet? No, we just have it here as a reference for you in case you don't have one of your own. If you do have one of your own that you have there at the property, you are more than welcome uh, to use that, okay? Reporting, so how to develop the most helpful training, uh, the most helpful report. And again, that's going to be the training percentage report. Those filters in order to create it. Resources, remember that's where you've got some very helpful information there. Uh, this webinar will eventually appear there. You already have access to those situational break room posters. They're at your disposal at any time. Group training sessions. And then last but not least, the support center. Um, so if you have questions about this demo um, or questions about how to do a lot of different things, um, it's a great resource. Um, you can go there, which is vincagroup.desk.com. Um, a lot of common questions that we come across are the answers are there. Uh, so please, again, feel free to reach out to us for any questions that you may have.
All right. Other than that, thank you so much for joining our demo today. Uh, we're going to open up the lines for any questions that anyone has at this point. Um, feel free if you would if you would rather continue using the chat box, you're more than welcome to do so. But definitely now is the time for any questions that you may have. April, what do we have? So far, we've just had a few questions on um, group training and, and the courses that can be used. So those of you that are in Vinza Peak, um, some of those group training sessions are pretty standard. Um, for those of you that have custom um, LMSs and have rearranged your training, um, those can be done on one-offs on your manager. Uh, log in my courses. You can play those courses in any order that you'd like. Um, we did have some questions about CSV files and that we do absolutely help with those. Um, and we had an idea that came through about sending certificates to any designated email within the profile and that's something we're going to pass over to our development team that's not something that we have thought about and would greatly help a lot of folks teams so those are items that have came through the chat box um, again that's all that's come through so if you have questions and you're brave enough you can certainly open your mic up give us a shout out you can go through the chat box other than that I would like to say a big thank you from the Venza team uh, for those of you that have joined and made this a priority, information security is very important to us and we hope that you find it important to your teams. And so we're going to stay on for just a few more moments. Thank you all for joining. All right, I know that we don't have any questions. April, let me know if you have any questions, but I am going to take this time to go over um, the Intel dashboard. That's something we haven't covered, and so we're on the Manager dashboard menu right now. Um, this is something that you may or may not have, depending on your specific brand or property management. Um, but if you have questions about the Intel dashboard, please feel free to reach out to us, and we're happy to answer that question for you. Um, if you have an executive meeting or if you have, um, if you just want to know how your specific um, brand or property management group is progressing through the program, you do have the Intel dashboard. Um, it will give you basically a roll up of how your team is prog progressing through phishing, um, the e-learning man, um, e-manning, I'm sorry, e-learning modules as well as the spot check awareness. So I just wanted to show this briefly so that if you're wondering overall how you're doing, um, you have this at your fingertips as well. All right, everyone, I'm not seeing any new questions come in or heard anyone um, call out through the, uh, the microphones or anything. Again, we'd like to thank you from the Venza team, Kayla, especially for presenting today. I'm going to go ahead and close this session out. If you have any other questions, you know absolutely how to get a hold of us. Kayla actually has that on the monitor now as you're leaving. We're going to stop the recording and have a wonderful holiday season. Bye-bye. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. We'll talk to you next year.